I had a huge laugh at the expense of a hacker recently at work when I tried to get a phishing campaign sent to us, but on their website with a fake Microsoft Office login page, they had left a few too many clues behind. They had not only left the source code of the web page, but had also left access to a log file of all the IP addresses, well, the victims who had logged in to the website. So first off, let me just show you how the attacks begin. It starts with an email to the user, and there's various different styles that we've seen. I'm just going to show you a couple of them so you get the idea. Generally not that sophisticated. It goes along the lines of trying to get people to click a link or open an attachment with a malicious link inside it. Please see attached order document. It was scanned and sent to you using the integrated Excel in PDF. Why would anyone click on this? Uh, sadly, a user did click on this one and their account was breached. Slightly too late to rescue the user on this one, but other ones that we've had. Please see below SharePoint attachments, and yeah, these are crudely written links. I think it looks better in Outlook, but I have to say that Kmail does look a lot better at stopping, or at least highlighting the fact that uh, an email is dodgy. This is a URL rewriting service that we use from Cisco, so when a link is retrospectively caught as being malicious, then it, we do have a chance of blocking access to the link. And this works not just on our devices, but anything that anyone else uses, well, from a mobile phone or if they're on a different internet service. And yet another one where this has a proof of payment in quotes as a HTML file. Unfortunately, I don't have an actual sample of the email for this specific attack, but what I did was I had an attachment and I ran it through a virtual machine. And this is a video capture from the virtual machine. Yes, a Windows 7 VM. So we have a payment note from Abbey Hotel Bath. I was thinking when I looked at it, I'm sure I had recollections of staying in this hotel, and indeed I have spent one night in this hotel, a Best Western hotel in Bath. It had terrible noise insulation, and that really is my only recollection of the hotel. Not a very good night's sleep. Anyway, the attacker is just trading on their name. It's not necessarily a breach of Abbey Hotel's website. So what we have is a DocuSign, <laughs> secure file, so I can't say this without laughing, a secure file and a link to view the file in DocuSign. Okay, why would anyone look at this and think this is legitimate? <laughs> Highlight and link shows it goes to litigagroup.com. I think this may have been a legitimate website and that they've been compromised. So when the page opens, we're presented with a Microsoft login form. Anyone who uses Office 365 may well be familiar with this login screen. Unless your company has customized it, which the company I have worked for have customized theirs, but users still seem to think this is the legitimate one. Can't necessarily teach all the users everything. So the first thing I go and do is mess around with the website. I go diving into a different folder. This tends to cough up some interesting results. Okay, in this one, it's just come up with a random subfolder. But then we go to the directory above and we find an interesting file left there called archive.zip, which is funny because it's the same name of the subfolder here called archive, where the malicious code is stored or the fake login screen is stored. So we'll download a copy of that and come back to that in a moment. Anyway, onwards with triggering the actual phishing page. Because I enjoy doing this, so I'll type in a fake login name at a fake domain. Yep. So my password is, I think that's 123456 if you'd like to copy it and log in as me as adobe at adobe. Mm. So go to the next page and we land on support.google.com. Well, this helps me understand when a user has clicked on the link. And if I look at their internet history and I see this exact same pattern, then I'll know they have entered some sort of details, quite generally their own details, because they haven't realized that they've just landed on a page which is not a legitimate Microsoft page. Yes, it may look like it. Doesn't mean it's legitimate at all. Just something to bear in mind when you are logging into a website, that you are logging into the correct website. Anyway, I've taken a look at this folder which I acquired, and I actually show you that on my main system because there's no further need to look in this virtual machine. Starting at the point you would land on the website traditionally, we have the index.php page. And this is where we have the randomly named folder, 
That's a random number generated and then using the MD5 hash. But then what is this bit here about IP and a file? File fopenvu.txt, f write, IP address, date. And that's interesting. What is this error log as well? What is this? Can't they code their PHP properly? And then for the actual phishing page, it is a right mess, but what we've got? Suppress error reporting. Yeah, we don't want the legitimate site owner to know that anything dodgy is being run on their page. And there's various things to read through, and to be honest, that one's not particularly useful. Again, yet another page, and there's only one item I'm really interested in. I think it's under finish, isn't it? Don't know why they're interested in the operating system. Windows 3.1. I sometimes wonder where this code is scraped from. Windows 3.1. I'd love to try and visit it in Windows 3.1 just to see what happens. Anyway, what's all this here? An email address, password, a to address, sending it off to a Gmail account. Yeah, that really is what happens. They just send the details to a Gmail account and then try and abuse it later. And in the case of this particular phishing email, they fire the user off to somewhere else. There wasn't anything too interested in the other folders. But for the final one, the artifact of the users who have logged into it. I do believe this is a reuse of code when you look at the dates. We've got 2017, 8, 15, so 15th of August 2017. And then most of it's around 2017 until we get to the sort of very bottom of the screen. So we jump a bit in the days. So we've got August, October 2017. And then we go to this year. And basically this entire section is that day. I was looking at this site just before lunchtime. So yeah, just before 12.30. So there have been this many users go on to it in that day. These domains are really short-lived. So yeah, this has been spun up stolen and abused, uh, probably be abused for that day, maybe the following day as well. The victims on here though were from a variety of different sources. There was a couple of Amazon IPs and look, I'm, I've redacted all the IPs so I can't give you away the information, but yeah, it was, there was Amazon, there was DigitalOcean and a couple other miscellaneous ones. I wanted to try and attribute it to a specific company. Given this actual campaign had only hit, I think it was two or three users, and yeah, it's pathetically small. So, But this is part of the problem. The campaigns are so small, so short-lived, they're getting very difficult to stop, but it's still a challenge. But anyway, that was some amusement that the hacker had left too many details behind on their little website. I hope you found that interesting. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later.